So don't worry, you missed nothing. You just missed the agenda page, and uh, there's nothing else. Uh, okay. The first thing is um, key dump. So uh, the key dump goal is very simple. It's just uh, dump the kernel's VM core when it uh, have a panic, and uh, so it works by uh, by design. It will reserve a chunk of memory and preload a key dump kernel in in that that, that area of memory, uh, and also a key dump init run ls into it. So the memory is really inside and controlled by the correct kernel size, uh, the correct kernel parameter, and it will be reserved very early on bot. Uh, and after the kernel is panicked, it will key like jump into the key dump kernel. And the key dump kernel will just run the init in the preloaded key dump init RAM S. And that's used, that is the user space. The user space will just read the info from the proc VM core, which is the interface provided by the key dump core that you can uh, read the old info from the data kernel. And also, the user space will set up the dump target and dump the VM core onto it. So by this design, it was pretty uh, robust, but uh, with, a very, uh, with a memory overhead, because uh, this, can, this part of memory is never used until the panic actually happened. Uh, so there is a complex that preserved memory size should be as large enough to contain the kernel, the unit RAM MFS, and the user space. Uh, and it should also should be small because you don't want to waste the memory that, uh, uh, that are never used. And the, uh, the, the overall usage of that uh, key dump memory is greatly dependent on the user space and the driver. So uh, the next part is for the Fedora and Rio because the user space design here is quite uh, Maybe could, could be quite different from other distributions. So you need RAM S and uh, the user space part in the Fedora and the Rail is designed to support many different card, kind of dump targets, like the real block device, uh, dump to an LVM partition, dump to an NFS partition, dump over a fiber channel of fiber channel over Ethernet and the SSH, everything you can find. Basically, the Fedora and Rail can dump the kernel onto it. Uh, so to do that, it heavily used the existing implementation stacks. So it heavily uses the drag hat because they have a very similar goal. The drag hat is uh, to generate the so initial RAM FS for uh, ordinary boot. The ordinary boot will just uh, bring on the boot target and the switch root on it. And for the key dump, it will boot and uh, uh, set up the dump target and dumped onto it. So the progress is very familiar. So it just uses the drag hat. Uh, the good thing is that it's, this, uh, this kind of implementation make it very uh, powerful and um, uh, avoid a lot of labor heavy works and support a lot of targets without too much work. But uh, the problem is that your space will be heavy because uh, many of these implementation stacks are supposed to be run in an ordinary environment, not key dump. So they will cost a lot of memory and uh, the binary size is very large. So the first thing we do is to shrink the user space and uh, you need to run FS tests. Uh, for example, the typically the initial RAM FS set and compressed for key dump will be like uh, uh, 80 megabytes, and uh, it will be even larger uh, when it's actually being extracted in the key dump kernel because of some fragmentation fragmentation issues. Uh, and for example, for in real eight, a typical reservation value of the key dump kernel is 168 megabytes. So almost half, more than half of the memory is used just to contain the initial RAM FS. That's a very big, uh, very, a very big memory consumer. So the first thing that will be is used and uh, uh, improved for the key dump is a strict house only mode. Um, the drag hat usually it 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 will uh, introduce it will include a lot of redundant drivers in the in this RAM FS in case of any hardware or environment change, because you don't want, do not want your computer to stop booting just because you change the, the graphic card or change the network card. Um, but for the key dump, it, uh, it want to in this RAM FS to be as small as possible. So it uses a, a new host only, strict host only mode. In that mode, Drake Hardware will only bring in the hardware and uh, only bring in the modules that uh, are strictly needed for setting up the certain dump target. So uh, this one is initially added in this project pre request and with a lot of other fix and improvements. So now basically um, the NFS, uh, multi NIC machines and other drivers are optimized with this mode. So now if you use the drag hat uh, host only mode strict, the drag will now build a much minimized init RAM NFS and everything is much smaller. 
but that's not enough. The next thing is uh, scratch the init RAM FS content. Remember that I just said that uh, the init RAM FS will got uh, uncompressed as a whole into the uh, RAM once the kernel boot. So uh, instead of uncompress everything, uncompress the file in raw format, it's uh, keep it uh, compressed as a scratch image and uh, add an overlay, read read write overlay onto it, then switch root onto it. Uh, we just uh, replaced the uh, the init uh, the init program, which is systemd by default, with a custom script. That which one we will just uh, uh, set up the scratch image and also a root uh, read read write overlay on the scratch image. Then switch root onto into that image. That image contains systemd, and to systemd, uh, the whole floor seems never touched because it's uh, because everything looks the same. It's just uh, the initial RAMFS is now a scratch image instead of a RAMFS. Uh, the idea is simple, but it comes with a very long journey because uh, many parts and many, many corner cases, it's really uh, hard to cover. And so it takes us a long time to make this thing work perfectly. But now uh, with all the changes, now it's possible to build a very small but functional drag cut in the RAMFS as to with this command, drag cut dash dash, ultimately strict and uh, add a scratch module. The so init RAM FS will be much smaller, but uh, uh, the functionality is the same. Uh, and also, this command line is a whole command line used by KDOM to generate the init RAM FS. If you are interested, you can look, have a look. Uh, and also, we repackage the systemd because uh, systemd is very large and it's still growing. We have talked with uh, some, we uh, raised it is issue some time ago. So, it's the systemd usually uh, in the version, in the early version, you know, use only five megabytes in total for the binary file, but now it's uh, 20 megabytes. So basically, we, in KDOM, we really do not want all these fancy new features. So we just uh, turn off all the features and repackage it and use that system instead of the uh, host uh, uh, installed one. And uh, that one also reduces the memory by a lot. So with all these uh, user space changes, uh, the, uh, the credit kernel value had to be cut by almost a half in the Fedora. And also, it's part of the changes it landed in real. So the credit kernel usage in real is also much smaller with these changes. So this is a part for the user space and the, the unit RAM FS changes. And the next thing is for the kernel and some uh, feature new tools. So we uh, uh, to, uh, this, for kernel usually it be feel pretty good, but sometimes some drivers and you. you Using a lot of memories, and then we want to have a better look of the where the most memory goes. So previously, Drake had have a RD domain debug, which is very simple. It just prints out the mem info and the slab info. Um, uh, with RD mem debug level X2, it will use the abstract to trace some memory locations, but uh, it only trace for a very short period, and then use the batch to do some um, collection info jobs. So that's why it's very uh, it's quite slow and not very really helpful. So the problem is with uh, tracing the memory usage of the KDOM kernel is uh, the first for the kernel modules. They may only consume very little memory upon load, but uh, it will consume a lot of memory when actually being used, like you if up turn on, turn on uh, an IC, and uh, the NIC uh, driver will only allow this memory when the interface is actually on. Uh, and also memory will get allocated and freed so the peak usage is very important, but uh, it's not easy to catch it. And also user space info is really matters. And then you want to know uh, which user space progress uh, allocated the most memories. And also the memory is already itself is pretty precious in key dump. So the, uh, the tracing tools should not cost you a lot of memories or else the key dump will run out of memory and uh, you cannot finish the tracing. And also the tracing tool, we expect it to be out of box, smaller, as small as possible, and do not have a lot of library dependencies because we want to uh, integrate the whole workflow into KDAF. So uh, to make this thing, to make it uh, possible, we I tried to make a new tool, uh, name it uh, Memstrack, and uh, put it here, this uh, GitHub link. So it's uh, basically, it uh, supports the binary proof. It's just a uh, startup, starter, uh, uh, set, uh, set up the prof, uh, tracing and then collecting the info from the ring buffer. And then it will maintain our integrated tree of the page allocation stacks in the user space. And the memory footprint of the tool is quite small, small enough for KDAMP. Um, 
It manages to redu reduce a lot of redundant stack trace infos, and uh, typically it only uses uh, four megabit of memory in the in a whole QDAM ring. That is uh, good enough for, for now. Um, and also, it can record the total memory locations, uh, the peak memory allocation of each stack, and also the stack trace of each uh, historical peak allocations. And during the whole QDAM ring, so we, you will not miss any detail of where the pages goes. Mm, and it supports different. Uh, result outperformer, so you can turn the outperformer very flexibly, and also support the access perf and the page owner. So the early uh, early allocation is also possible to be traced with it too. And the tool is very what's very good about it is very tiny, only relies on LFC. So the binary is small, and the enable it uh, embed it in the, the key dump environment is very doable. So. But to make it even easier to use, like adding the UI, you can have a look. Uh, this is a TOI. It also shows how it organizes uh, memory uh, location, uh, memory location, how, uh, how the memory is allocated internally. So this is how it manages the memory location tree. Um, and also it can uh, collect the memory allocation by by the modules. Like in this picture, I just uh, to do some demo. So I already discussed the bug. That module and it costs a lot of memories and also a lot of some other uh, modules to just show it. So when used with KDAMP, how it works? So it's very easy to just uh, start a name track with these parameters, give it a two report format, and then let it just uh, top, uh, let it just uh, track the top uh, eighty percent of the memories that are being used. Uh, and when the key, when key dump is finished, uh, and before the key dump kernel reboot, we just uh, queue it with signage, and we will print the following info. So you can see in that output, uh, during that key dump range, the uh, scratch FS used the most memories, and the peak uh, location is much higher. Uh, also, the next thing is the word L console and uh, some other things. So this is uh, for a normal key dump ring in a VM in a virtual machine. Uh, and uh, also, you see, I expected two two report here. One is a module summary, one is module top. So this way, the the module top will tell you the how the uh, where the memory goes by printing out the stack trace. So it's very clearly in this uh during that key number in those things just are allocated for the page cache. So it's fine. If we give it a, a more a memory pressure, the page cache will probably get free. So that uh, is there is no issue with this one. Uh, and we have used it to to fix some practical uh, real real life uh, problems. So for example, the SecDB4, we used to, to have the issue that SecDB4, some machine with this, uh, graph, with this uh, network uh, card will have OM during key dump. So I just uh, increase the crash kernel value and uh, start a mem stack with it. So the mem stack just pointed out where the memory goes very clearly. Uh, the allocation happened with the system DOD, just uh, I tried to the module and the module, uh, Located about twenty thousand pages, and the, the stack trace went through the set before a debug VM call add key down. So, uh, just to read the code a bit. I found out that it's trying to add a lot of things to the VM call for debug, and just uh, uh, disable that part, and just everything just works normally. And also, uh, we have uh, fixed other many other issues, like when the IP command tried to start an interface, some uh, network card. The ring buffer uh, location function allocated a lot of pages due to the page set issue. And this one is also easy to track with the memory track tool. Uh, I lost the, the log, so I just put the uh, one typical one here. And also, there are some other examples, like for NFS mount call, uh, it shows which uh, where the memory is being consumed by uh, NFS mount call. Uh, I stripped a lot of the lines because it's very long, so that's probably would be easier to be showing the slider. Uh, you can see the mount tool with uh, most of them also spend on the page cache, reading the binaries, and uh, the NFS4 module in the kernel only takes about 20 pages, and which is very acceptable. Uh, and also it can trace the uh, user space memory usage, and also the user space uh, peak usage and the final allocation of the pages. So like in this report, it is generated with the main stack data report text summary and sort by peak. So the uh, the process of using most most uh, memories on its peak usage will be shown in the top. So the init, which is the system D, consumed about uh, uh, 
600 pages and the journal D, which also the system D logging uh, program con consumed up to 600 pages. Uh, so in the hope uh, report, there will be like, there are like seven pages consumed by user space. And um, the, the, user, uh, the user stack is also available, just a change the report format. So we can analyze where these map pages are being consumed in the kernel space. And also, I just tell I just have said it uh, spot the page owner. So some earlier locations are also traceable with this tool. So just if you use the page owner as a backend, you can see during the kernel boot, some init calls it because you it using a lot of memories. The so generic file write, which uh, just uh, I think is writing to the init run as file, file system, it consumes a lot of pages. And also the p store, the p store init, which is the init call, consume a lot of memories. And p store is not needed for KDOM, so we can consider disable it later for GitHub. Uh, you can find more info about the tool as this GitHub page. Uh, and we have integrated with a uh, drag card. You just use the drag card um, equal four or equal five, which will equals to passing this uh, arguments to the to the main track and then kill it after the parent hook of the key down, of, of the of the uh, drag card both progress. Uh, and there are something many things undone about the tools, like uh, a more detailed user space tracing. Now all the stack traces are limited in the kernel space, uh, and uh, do more debug with the key, with the mem stack so we can uh, better understand the uh, memory usage of the key dump and optimize it even more, and also integrate it um, uh, with uh, the page owner uh, backend and the perf because now it can use only one. So you can you can, you have to either trace the alloc allocation or the runtime allocation. Uh, but it's doable to integrate the two. Uh, the next thing is some next steps and the work, work in progress items. So the first thing is still we want to reduce the memory usage even more because now even after compressed uh, init run it will cost about 30 megabytes. A squash is the uh, most um, mature solution yet, but um, there are most, many other fuels based compression systems that looks promising. We are also trying it off. Uh, and also the kernel memory usage, uh, uh, we are trying to optimize that too, because now the neural space is, is much smaller. We want the next thing we will be working on the kernel. Uh, and the next thing that's being worked on is the quad kernel X auto, because first it's very hard for anyone to guess the value. And and um, mm, the kernel memory usage very uh, variable depend on your your space and depend on your hardware. Like the memory encryption, if you have that one enabled, you may have to reserve extra usage. And uh, sometimes you it's by familiar fam firmware will use a lot of, a lot of uh, memories. You don't want to uh, take uh, you to to change the quad kernel value manually every time is not very uh, smart thing to do. So having a quad kernel auto could be a very good beginning of this whole automation progress. Yeah, I think that's most of the things of the lecture chair today. So I think it's fine for QA. Uh, there is a question in the chat, uh, in, in the chat uh, by Alexander. Uh, does MEMS MEMS track work for Debian or it's real specific? Yeah, it works for uh, it works with Debian and also uh, I see some people have helped to, to package it for Arc Linux. So I think it works uh, is is destroyed independent. It works anywhere. Uh, 